Astrophotographers in Australia have had a field day over the last week with a comet travelling at nearly 300,000 kilometres per hour lighting up our skies. And the good news is that it's due to re reappear in the middle of this month, but only if it survives a close call with the sun. With more, here's Matt Woods from the Perth Observatory. Hi, Matt. So I managed to get through that without uh, naming this comet. <laughs> Can you do that and tell us a bit more about it? Hi, Roz. Cool. Yeah, I'll try not uh, to slaughter the slaughter the name. It's uh, uh, C dash twenty three A three Shushishan Atlas. Uh, so this is the uh, out of the two comets that we knew were going to be uh, naked eye. This was going to be the best of the two. Uh, Pons Brooks ended up just being a binocular comet, so you needed a pair to see that one. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's, it it was a little bit delayed in firing up, but uh, it was really showing a nice performance in the last couple of days and to weeks. So at the moment, it's going to be coming going around the sun with, and uh, back in around the uh, 12th of October, we'll start to see it in our western skies. So photographers, as we said, have had a field day. We're looking at uh, some pictures now. They are amazing. Uh, from where and when has it been most visible in Australia? That's a great thing. After a couple of years ago, we had Neowise, which was mainly a, uh, a northern hemisphere comet. This one's been the best viewed from the southern hemisphere. So unfortunately, our mortal enemy, the clouds uh, here in West Australia, have decided to park themselves over the last couple of days. So we uh, we really only had a, one final chance back on um, Tuesday uh, morning to get it. So I'm, personally, I'm hoping to uh, that it survives going around the sun so that we can get some more views of it here in the West with the beaches that we have uh, in the in mm. west australia if it does survive going around the sun it'll return brighter than ever won't it yeah and it's going to be at its closest point so to earth so it's going to be roughly around 71 million kilometers uh, and the reason we're hoping this survives is because it's really just a big dirty snowball it's made up of water carbon dioxide ammonia and rocky material and so when it comes into the inner solar system it uh, it starts to heat up and so it goes from a, a solid in ice straight to a gas without going through the liquid phase so it's quite explosive and that tail is created because of that ice being ejected off the comet and then the sun's solar wind blowing it away so that tail always points away from the sun and uh, sometimes you even in the past we've had like comet hail bop uh, in 97 you actually get a secondary tail which is uh, which is a blue ion tail which is also fantastic to see so it's not as good as say like comet McNaught back in 2006 or comet Lovejoy in 2014 but some of the photos um, that's been coming out have just been absolutely stunning yeah they are how do you take a good photograph of a of a comet, Matt? Well, up until now, you've needed to be a morning person, uh, which is a little bit hard for me at the moment, working at the observatory. Uh, but you, it's really around about the 10, 10 15 second exposures, even up to 20 ex exposures, and just may, uh, playing around with the F ratio and um, ISO on your camera just to get, and you just take multiple shots. And uh, if you're really into your astrophotography, then you can actually go and stack those uh, those photos together using pro, uh, software mm. and then you can work in like Lightroom or Photoshop or other free image uh, manipulation programs and just draw out the colours and, uh, and draw out that comet more as well. Fingers crossed it comes back in the middle of the month. Matt Woods, great to talk to you. Thank you. Anytime.